<laughs> well, we can continue to talking about ordering all of her deliciousness from now into forever. And it's just going to make our stomachs just rumble and our, our taste buds water. But thank you, Miss uh, Chrissy Faison from Lean Back Soul Food for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone again to what I believe is week five of Building Bridges for Equity, Justice, and Community. Uh, my name is Alvi Davali. I am one of the co-chairs for the Outreach Committee here at St. Anne's, and it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce live and in person, <laughs> making our mouths water here, <laughs> Ms. Chrissy Faison of uh, Lean Back Soul Food. Uh, if you have not read her incredible bio journey um, in our announcements, then you I have missed just being blown away by all of the wonderful accolades that this 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 amazing woman like I'm I'm an awed and inspired. <laughs> you have definitely awed and inspired um, inspired me by all the wonderful things that you have done and you are doing for our community. So without further ado, I welcome and present Miss Chrissy Faison. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And, and, and Chrissy, do you yeah. mind if I read your bio in sure, case anybody <laughs> who, who hasn't had an opportunity to do that? Sure. Um, Chrissy Faison is the world's greatest caterer on earth <laughs> <laughs> and an award-winning entrepreneur. She is widely regarded for being the owner and executive chef of Lean Back Soul Food, a triad catering company featuring a wide range of dishes with a focus on Southern cuisine that brings friends and family together. She's also a graduate of North Carolina A&T State University. Chrissy founded the Lean Back Give Back Foundation, a 501c3 company whose mission is to work with communities to increase opportunities and resources for women in the culinary field, encourage food interest in children and care for the world, one community at a time. Mm -hmm. She has been named the Greater Winston-Salem Inc. 2021 recipient of the Winston Under 40 Leadership Award, Ooh. the 2021 Triad Minority Women Business Newcomer of the Year, and tw most recently, the 2022 Miss Forsyth County Plus America, just wow. to name a few. <laughs> when she's not in the kitchen or in the community, she loves to travel with her pet Pancake, the bougie bunny, spend <laughs> time with family and friends. Oh, yeah, bougie bunny. bunny. Yeah. Well, you've unsaid everything. <laughs> um, so, yes, I guess I'll, let me just, because I'll just go point by point from this. Um, so, I did start Lean Back Soul Food, my catering company, in 2017. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I started back, well, I started in uh, October of 2016, and then I started as a sole proprietorship. Um, I basically did that because as a sole proprietorship, I wanted to get into cooking, and I, it was something that I wanted to do for a long time, but I just didn't, life slowed me down, and after I graduated from a and I felt like I was just working job for job. I wasn't really, I didn't feel like I was making a difference. I was just living, but I wasn't living. So I said, well, cooking is something that you want to do. Why don't you just go ahead, make those steps, do it. So I started as a sole proprietorship. And as I kept going, as I started to learning, I learned that I needed to be an LLC. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. in case, especially in my um, industry, if something happened, I was splitting my finances from the company's finances. It's just, thank God nothing has ever happened. However, that's basically why I started um, the LLC. And it's if you like Google it, it'll come up in 2017 because that's when I did that. Um, one of the things when I was starting my catering company is I knew that everybody couldn't afford my food. Of course, I started off low to get my name out there. And then I raised my prices and everything, you know, as industry came and was, oh, the food is really good and other people aren't seasoning their food, I'm seasoning mine. So people are gonna pay for the food. So I raised my prices. At that point, I realized everybody could not afford my food, but I still wanted to feed everybody. So this that's part of the reason of why I came up with the uh, give back. We're gonna talk about that later. Uh, but I now call it the lean back give back block party, which I had in the oh. part. 
And basically what that was is I was feeding the homeless. It started out with me just feeding the homeless. I would cook the same food that I would feed to a client or a customer, and that was their opportunity to have the food. Um, I started, the first event I did for that was at the Enterprise Center, it's where I cook out of now. And then I've now, it's grown bigger, and so now I'm at Bailey Park downtown. Wow. But me saying that was, that was a way that I wanted to give back to the community. So me giving back has always been in my heart. So um in 2017 I put out the flyer I put it on social media I said we're gonna do it life happened I wasn't able to do it mm. but I believe I'm pretty sure it was finance reasons financial reasons that I wasn't able to do it um so I had to cancel it broke my heart completely <laughs> but um the next year business kept going business was growing and then I was able to do it in 2018 so, block party mm, the block mm, yeah yeah so back then it was called the lean back give okay. back thanksgiving affair gotcha okay mm -hmm. and so i do it every november gotcha. and um i was doing it the saturday before mm -hmm. uh, thanksgiving and so that would give everybody their thanksgiving right. meal but um so that's when and I was paying for everything myself. I wasn't having sponsors or anything like that. It was just something that I wanted to do. I had a, we had a speaker, we had music playing through the, uh, the iPhone or whatever phone and just played music and then we served food. It was that simple. Um, then as time goes on, I'm cooking, my name's getting out there, I'm doing different things in the community. Um, the Thanksgiving affair is growing like more people are you know becoming interested and I, again i'm still spending all of my money which i had no problem doing because i don't have any kids um i'm just you know i just have this money i have nothing to do with this so i'm like okay let me do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just paying my bills like my bills are paid right, right. Right. so i'm just like okay so what do i do now so that's when the thanksgiving affair became even bigger and people are like well why don't you go ahead and start the 501c3? Because you have people coming and say, hey, I, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Start the 501c3 so we can donate tax write-offs. I said, oh, okay, fine. So <laughs> <laughs> I can save some of my money now. Yeah. So now that's when I came up with the 501c3 last year, um, 2021. Yeah. So 2021. And um, Last year was the biggest and the best one that we had. We had a live performer. We had um, did we have we had a cotton candy machine. We had the bounce house for the kids. We had I still cooked all the food, but I also had a volunteer team, so I wasn't doing everything on my own. So okay. literally on that day, I was just walking around, just speaking to everybody. We yeah. had the servers. We had volunteers. It was amazing, and what I switched up was it wasn't just for the homeless anymore. It's for everybody. Wow. It's for everybody because my business without Winston-Salem would be nowhere. Uh -huh. So this is why I give back to the community. So all my clients can come. It's kind of like a customer appreciation mm -hmm. thing, but it's for everyone. So wow. that's where that part of it came from. And you can actually see that on the site. Can you see on the site? Yeah. Hold on one moment. Where did it's you cook all this food? Mm -hmm. So I cook out of the Enterprise Share East Kinship on uh, Martin Luther King. Okay. Um, it's the Old Boys and Girls Club. Club. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's like an incubator right now. It oh. has offices. People can like do their startup businesses in, in there. And it's going to be under... Uh, pretty sure it's under programs. And if you scroll down to the middle of the page, I think the first thing that comes up was um, Wing Back Kids Cooking Club. There we go. Yeah. Oh, Click okay. over and then you'll see, uh, uh, hit this middle dot. Okay. You'll see the block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that year we had, the, we partnered with uh, the fire, City of Winston-Salem Fire Department came out uh, they handed out little hats and mm -hmm. flashlights, which I have now. And then uh, she also helped serve. Um, we had uh, FedEx. They took care of my signage. Oh, wow. um, 
we had uh, Judge Kristen come out. She served the food. Mm -hmm. Judge uh, Kristen Kelly, she was just put into office. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot going on. So that so I revamped it to the I no longer. That was another thing. Someone took my Saturday, the um no. the Saturday no. before Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so I had to switch to November. I think it's like November thirteenth this past year, and so that was another reason I felt like it was getting away from Thanksgiving. Mm. So I renamed it to the Give Back Bot Party, yeah. and that's only because I don't want it. Like I still want like the homeless, and I still want everybody to come. So I named it the Bot Party. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we do at the foundation. Um, another thing that I, I'm doing now is the Lean Back Kids Cooking Club, which I'm actually going to be with them today at oh, 1.30. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, basically what that is, is that's my way of introducing kids to the culinary world. Because there's so many different things you can do. I started that last year, and I was... Uh, doing each and every class, of course, teaching them, putting them in the kitchen, and they're learning how to cook. They cook steaks, they cook chicken, they cook uh, potatoes, uh, taught them knife skills. Mm -hmm. They've done a lot, and I want to say we're at about 25 kids wow. in the cooking club, give or take, because sometimes more, a little bit more show up, and then sometimes a little bit less show up. We have volunteers that help. Um, a lot of volunteers are parents, though. Mm -hmm. And so they'll come, take a little bit of pressure off of me because it's really hard to watch all those kids. Mm -hmm. on. They're probably learning skills as well. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Nice skills. I could do that. Yeah, I can learn like, 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 have something for us. I'm like, can I? Let me get the kids done. And then we'll work on something for you all. So um, that's something that I do under the foundation also. But the difference, I'm, I'm going to call it semester, the difference I've done this year is I've kind of taken a step back from it because I do have so much going on and I've learned how to ask and I've learned how to accept. So I've actually had um, different culinary entrepreneurs from around the city come in. Wow. Mm -hmm. So last month we had... Uh, I want to say that was the first one. So last month we had a nutritionist come in mm -hmm. and he used to be a, um, he used to work for the county health, uh, who's an environment specialist. And he's basically the ones who uh, gave us our sanitation grade. Uh. And we, we had a nice meeting then. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only one that gave me a 97.5. <laughs> but we've been friends ever since. <laughs> and I don't let him forget it. But he came in and he's also studying to be a nutritionist. So he came in, he taught the kids about my plate and the food groups and everything like that. That's great. Today we have, I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Hugo Juice Bar. Uh, is owned by yeah. William Fulton. Yeah. He's coming today, and um, he's gonna be. The kids are gonna be bottling up their own juices. They're going to be. I want to say they're making a label. They get to put that on the bottle. Mm. And again, I get to step back. I yeah. just just be there and probably make the grocery list for this coming up event tomorrow. Right. So <laughs> that's gonna be a great experience for the kids. And then uh, the month after, next month, they'll be going to the garden at the Enterprise Center. There's a community garden there. So we're going to take them there and they're going to learn all about the vegetables and we'll probably do some cooking there also. Uh -huh. So there's a solar panel there so I can just hook some things up and they can hmm. prepare. So we are doing different activities like that. That's great. Yeah. Is and it once a month or once a week? It is once a month. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I started out doing it twice a month mm -hmm. and then last month <laughs> with my schedule so I did switch it up to once a month so I try to make it a great experience every once a month and then you know as time goes and we get more volunteers we can have maybe it be like twice a month but I would love to get some more disadvantaged kids in the cooking mm -hmm. club mm -hmm. and may, I'm thinking that's what I would want that second class to be mm -hmm. for kids that may not have that opportunity maybe we can get a van and get them bused over to the kitchen mm -hmm. that way they can experience yeah, the the transportation might be exactly. a big issue we, so what I've also been doing is I've been working with the kids coalition uh cooking they have some like cooking class and that is sponsored by Awake Forest and they've invited me to come. And basically what they do is, is and this is ran by Margaret Savulka. And 
they're going to the kids because transportation mm. is a problem and maybe their parents are working you know can't get them to it and it's easier to go to the kids take these experiences to them so they literally have um like stations set up they've got the the burner set up this is in a classroom they're from school like i'm going tomorrow to polo elementary mm -hmm. So for species, species. Um, yeah. on polar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a polar is. recreation place. Right that next place. To right. Right. That's where I'm going to the recreation center. Yeah. Right. They're right next to each other. Okay, that's good to know because I haven't Googled it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Every You're day really close You're to close it. You're close to it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. <laughs> so um, we're, that's, that's something that, you know, they're working on is to get the opportunities to the kids, where the kids are in after school programs, because it is, it's hard to get these kids to come mm -hmm. to opportunities like mine. And something I want to work on is getting to more disadvantaged kids as far as the curriculum, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, my latest project under the foundation, and I just announced it. So you guys read that I did a Never in my life thought I would do this, but I did a pageant <laughs> and um, it will be the third dot. I'm still working on it though. So it's not gonna be that much information, but you can hear my vision when I can tell you now. So um, I made that announcement finally, and it's called the Give Back Bridge Project. The Give Back Bridge Project is basically, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll start with the stats. So basically in America, there's 35 million people who are suffering from food insecurity. Mm -hmm and 12 million of them are children. In Forsyth County, I can't remember yeah. what our population is right now, but it's 15.5% of our population yeah. is suffering from food insecurity, mm -hmm. and 25% of that mm -hmm. number is it's children, children, right? There are 108 billion pounds of food that people in the food industry waste. I've done it myself, only because there's nowhere to take it. You can't take it to the same places because in the end, even if you take it to a homeless shelter, they are gonna end up throwing away because I mean, everybody's not coming in there to get the food. At the mm -hmm. same time, when you hear all of those numbers, it's not just homeless people who are hungry. Yeah. Right. Our neighbors, our sisters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our family, our friends, they're hungry and they're not telling us. I grew up, I'm not gonna say I grew up unfortunate. I grew up middle-class. It was three of us. My mom was a single mom. But I can remember times when my plate looked a little skimpy. Therefore, I knew that, you know, there's a little struggle there, right? So I, I know what it is to be hungry. And, but at the same time, I wasn't telling anyone that mm -hmm. people have pride. So that's why I came up with this idea. Um, when I wanted to do a restaurant, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was put a refrigerator outside and people would, the food that, I didn't sell or anything like that. We would just pack it up, put it in the refrigerator and people can come discreetly, come get their food, leave, take it, feed themselves, feed their family, right? I don't want to restaurant anymore. I like my time now. <laughs> so at the same time, I know that people in the restaurant industry, they're having the same issues. So mm -hmm. I want to partner with restaurants, local restaurants across the city. We're gonna start in Forsyth County and then we're gonna go across America. How about world, that? Right? There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wanna partner with them. I wanna get these fridges placed around the city and then the waste that the restaurants are having, they can just pack it up and then take it to a fridge. And then if somebody's hungry, then we wanna know, they can come to the fridge, take their food and they're good. So that's my project now that I'm working wow. on. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the wonderful. basis of it. That's all I got right now. <laughs> I still need to like research like the cost and things like that. Mm -hmm. I know that I would pay a stipend to the uh, restaurants who would participate for or whoever would want to put the fridge out there to take care of uh, electricity costs and things like that or packaging, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay for food because the whole point is to donate and to get rid of food that we were going to waste in mm -hmm. So. That's that's that. I love that idea. That's yeah. remarkable. I, I remember working at these the uh, at, pretty regularly at Samaritan Inn years ago when my kids were teenagers and helping me. But restaurants would come. We always volunteered on Saturday night or mm -hmm. no Friday night, and restaurants would come with mahi mahi, all kinds of stuff, and there was just so much food we really couldn't use it. And that was exactly. so sad. We hated to have to 
throw out stuff. Exactly. Because it's all going to the same places. Mm -hmm. And like, even if you call ahead, they'll be like, oh no, such and such is bringing their food. Right. We don't have any food for it. So we're just stuck with throwing it away. Mm -hmm. Trying yeah. to get away from that. We I, I worked at Wake Forest at the law school and we had um, events. We always had food left over mm -hmm. for And a lot of times we would take it to Samaritan Ministry. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Same so, place. yeah. Alfie's got her hand up. Alfie, do you want to say something? <clears throat> Yes. Um, good morning again, Chrissy. And I am loving the idea of partnering with uh, the local restaurants here in the area and putting together the, 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 the community fridge, if you will. And because, you know, food insecurity and food waste is, is, it's kind of one of my, I guess, platforms and passions to decrease it. Because I just like you grew up in a single family home. It was just my 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 sister, my younger sister, my mom, myself, and you know I too remember days where you know I think like the biggest meal that we got out of the week was Sunday, and we stretched the leftovers from that to like the next Sunday, mm -hmm. and we still do that in my house to this day. You know, so. Um, I don't know, uh, and I'm pretty sure you are being in the industry, uh, familiar with uh, Vivian and Stephanie at uh, Sweet Potatoes downtown, one of my favorite restaurants. If yeah. nobody's been to Sweet Potatoes sitting in this room, please go. You are missing out. Take me with you when you do. Uh, <laughs> but I would, um, I know that that's something that they um, are, are passionate about too. Um, in helping and supporting their communities. So that's just one of the restaurants that I know of that you can uh, talk to about partnering with for this. And there's just, there's so many others. Like there's, there's, there's a plethora of them here in the city that you could approach and talk to and definitely uh, speak with the guys that um, own and operate in our executive chefs at um, both Jeffrey Adams and the 4th Street Filling Station. I know that um, they purchased a, a local farm in Mount Air that was, you know, the family was retiring, they were about to sell it, but they had been getting all of their food and produce from them. So instead of letting it falter, they bought it and are really living into the whole farm to table um, uh, lifestyle, which I completely appreciate. Another two restaurants that you should do. I should get getting paid for plugging these people, but um, <laughs> Alvy, can you just, just some suggestions, you know, of places um, that you could talk to about partnering for this initiative. So you said Jeffrey Adams and you said Stephanie and Vivian and there was a third one. The filling station. Oh, Fourth Street. The yeah. Fourth Street filling station. Both Jeffrey Adams and Fourth Street filling station are, if I'm not mistaken, are owned and operated by the same uh, chefs and owners. Yeah, because he just bought another building too. Oh, Jeffrey wow. Adams. That whoever owns that, but yeah, the oh, old no, uh, crafty, mm. yeah, with the old taco place, yeah, yeah, bought that building. That was really nice. <coughs> <laughs> the country club used to bring over a whole bunch of food to snare me, and I remember that. Um, so, um, well, I don't know which one it was, I, but they probably I'm not sure, but a lot of those mm -hmm. country clubs, what are they going to do with their leftover food? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I mean, you do, we do catering events and we have leftover food. So, unless I'm, and then for uh, just protection reasons, we don't like let people take plates out and things like that because what happens is people will leave them in the car mm -hmm. and they get sick. Then, right. and then they'll say, oh, your food made me sick. So, we don't, you know, let people take food out, but I'll give it to like the, um, like my actual client and say, you know, if you want this food, you can take it with you. But if they don't want it, if, you know, they're just out of town to the wedding or something, we end up stuck with food. So I know I would definitely make use of the give back fridge. So, yeah. Okay. What a wonderful um, idea. Do you know if it's happening anywhere else in the United States? So I looked it up. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, oh, wow. There is a lady in Atlanta and she does like just like groceries and things like that. Uh -huh. But at the same time, 
mm, people need some well-balanced meals too mm-hmm. they do you know and they if they're homeless or something mm-hmm. they don't have a kitchen right they can't cook gonna cook it. Mm-hmm. yeah so at least at a shelter they have microwaves and things they can or somewhere they can warm it up and that and i'm just speaking about the homeless they can take it somewhere and get it warmed up mm-hmm. right or even gas stations yeah mm-hmm. but um even if it's somebody like you or not they can just take it home mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of pay it forward kind of setups where you know a place in philadelphia you can buy a slice and then give a slice yeah mm-hmm. and they have you know so anybody who walks in mm-hmm. will be able to enjoy a, pe- yeah. a piece of pizza but this is really a unique um setup yeah and um it just hit me. I don't know why. I, I love that I idea. In the shower or something. Yeah, that's, that's where a lot of ideas. great ideas, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, um, what can you do to make more changes? Because the ultimate goal before I leave is to change the world. Yeah. And that just hit me like um during the pageant I had to my during the pageant I had to come up with a platform and of course I'm food and so I was just like food insecurity I was like okay so what can you do with that and I had been thinking and thinking and it random I stopped thinking about it and then it just hit me I was just like Duh, that's yeah where you can't you do it yourself you don't want to rest mm-hmm. so why don't you partner with other people so yeah, yeah that is the project amazing um so what else can we talk about? <laughs> I think Donna has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. that that's okay. I I read, Christy, I read, started reading about you last night and it's, my, my jaw just dropped. It's just incredible. And then I even got to the fridge part and I had recently heard about a gentleman, but I believe he's a very wealthy um, um, restaurant person and he set this up and it's and I can't remember exactly I keep thinking it was North Carolina but probably not whatever it's all he's got big donors paying for the food to put it in there in other words they're they're buying they're they're you know they're buying the food to all his voters to put in those fridges and and I guess it was it, it would came out of the COVID it came out of COVID so it's like how can I keep my employees working you know, we're doing some carry out and everything, but then they started just making these meals to go in these fridges, but then the donor, you know, some donors were out there paying for them. So you have taken it to the ultimate basics. And it's just amazing because I kept thinking that would be nice, but it would really be cool if there could be some other way to do this. So bless your heart. This is awesome. I'm so excited. And I'm trying to figure out where to tap in with you. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Because I figured it was my idea um, that not only is food insecurity going down, our food waste are going down. Because I'm sorry, a billion pounds of food is just way too much food to be wasted. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. And even when you're talking about the other person doing this, and it may not be as nutritious. It's like I, I was at school, so I'm totally fascinated with you working with the children. That's awesome. But I also watched them at school go, yeah, and not eat what was in front of them, you know, because it wasn't appealing. Yeah. One thing I'm good at is getting those kids to eat something. <laughs> like, you. you have to try it. <laughs> and I just do reverse psychology on them. I'm like, if you tr- try it, and I, they make me eat the food that they they make. <laughs> 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 like, oh, you're not going to taste it? I'm like, yeah. And so I taste <laughs> Oh yeah, it's good. So if they see me eat it, they see me try it, and they made it themselves. They know what they did. Then um, they'll eat. It. Like the one time I had them do chicken thighs, uh, rice, and a vegetable medley, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Ew, yeah." I'm like, "But you all just made that vegetable medley. What do you mean, you?" <laughs> so, but I watched them put some on their plate and they yeah. Care. Yeah, they ask for more, is the question. right? Then, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'll take the green one because you know it's like the broccoli cauliflower carrot. Little, I'll take the, <laughs> you'll take the broccoli, you're gonna take the cauliflower too, please. I it was a lot of baking, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm excited that uh, uh, William, Chef William is coming today too because his juices are 
made straight from he doesn't add anything to them it's just straight vegetables it's just straight fruit wow so and i know he uses like spices and things like turmeric or something like that but it's nothing like artificial mm -hmm. so they're going to be able to see that and make it and like mm, this is good so oh. yeah i also heard you say and this this i was so glad you said it because we have this problem with our own rector is making sure that you know your limits. <laughs> you have to step back and ask other guests in. She's got a whole lineup of, of people doing sermons for her in Holy Week so that she's not dead by Sunday. So it, it, you, you, this is very healthy that you're realizing that. Yeah, I know. So important because your dreams are still, I mean, there's so much you still haven't fulfilled. So, yeah, you do need people to be able to yeah. work under you and then take over for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely learned the hard way for that. Like, I've had, I've had a knee strain for years. Uh oh. And all I had to do was physical therapy. I don't have time to do physical oh. therapy. My sister, yeah. So, um, but finally it's gone away. But uh, yeah, I, I, I will work myself to, like for an example, I have this now. I'm speaking with you guys. I have the kids club. I then have to do a meal prep. Then I have to wake up. I have Reynolds America tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. I still have Bowie's Market. Somebody asked how they can get lean back food. You can always order online and pick up at Bowie's Market every other Tuesday. Oh. That's a way you can have lean back. So mm -hmm. you're not going to have a catering event or something like that. So, I mean, that's how my schedule is this week. But then I have four weeks too. <laughs> how many people tomorrow morning? Um, this one's a small group. That's oh, why I'm not even really worried about oh. it. It's just like 50. Oh, well. No, just play. Like <laughs> oh, 50. No, it's what? I want to say they're at 15. Yeah. Oh, okay. The one yesterday, last I had an event last night. Like, if you go outside, you're going to see that my car is packed with tape edition, and I'm going to go unload after we leave here before I go somewhere else. But I, I just stay on the go, but um, I may look tired, but I'm always going to smile and have a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, do you have anybody helping with your with your food prep? Yeah, I, occasions. Mm -hmm, yeah, for like the bigger events when I know that I'm going to need some assistance and I don't want to be in there eight hours and I'm going to cut it down to four hours, I'll call in somebody and say, "Hey, you know, you want to come and help." Um, I'm actually sometime today. I'm going to be posting that I am hiring. Wow! And I'm going to put my stipulations on there because I need positive attitudes and I need work harder and I like to add ERs after everything. <laughs> I need these people to be because you are a representation of me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I treat people like I want to be treated probably more. You, you know? want to hire a brand ambassador. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing it today sometime. Someone had a question? Uh, I didn't have a question so much as an observation on how much you're into something here with respect to the food waste. The, the estimate is, I believe, that 40% of all food produced in the United States goes to waste. And if that can be cut back, it helps feed hungry people, saves people money, and actually protects the planet by keeping food out of landfills where it turns into methane. Uh, I, the example I thought of that I had the privilege to see was in Washington State, where there was an elementary school where something like 70% of the students were on um, federally assisted breakfast programs, but they were kids. And guess what? Kids didn't always eat everything they had in their tray. What mm -hmm. that district did was to simply train the kids that if you didn't eat it, you didn't open your milk carton and they had some prepackaged foods. Don't just dump it in the trash the way you do with your leftover meal, but take that and put it on a separate cart. Mm -hmm. And then they arranged to have that food from the separate cart go to a, a refrigerator so that it could be distributed through local food um, assistance um, programs. A simple step, amazingly complicated at the ground level, as you can imagine, because they had to worry about the health department and this, that, and the other. But that's, I love your model about the refrigerators. It just seems like a very sort of, it's like our blessing box only on a bigger scale. 
the challenge I imagine you must encounter is you may run into issues with your um, with your with the health department. Right. So mm -hmm. that's something else I'm going to have to look into, of course. Right. But I it's, I don't think it's going to be as extreme as we all think it is, mm -hmm. because it is food that's being given away. However, I would need the people um, who are donating to donate with the same integrity they would have when yeah. they're serving people who are paying. So even like if I'm doing a meal prep for you, I have labels on them. I'm going to have when it was prepared. I'm going to have when you need to throw it away. Mm -hmm. At the same time, people are coming to get those meals. They're probably going to eat it that day mm -hmm. or the next day anyway, right? So um, uh, that's that's a, 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 a good way for people to look at their label like, okay, this is what this is, and I know when I need to eat it. Um, it's, it's all about the little things. It's really not going to be that difficult and for especially for the health department and it won't be held to the the same standards as it would be if I was and it's crazy me saying this but it's not going to be held to the same standards as me actually serving you food because you paid for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well and you you have an in at the health department already by your person that used to work in environmental health who gave you the 97.5. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Alvy's got her hand up again. Alvy? I was, um, was Stan done? I'm sorry. Uh, I may have okay. Stan, did you want to follow up and then we can go to Alvy? No, no, I'm, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> but I do want to respond to something he said. Okay. When he was talking about uh, the kids putting it on the cart and then they were taking it somewhere, taking it a step further, when some of those kids come into school, the only food they're eating is that breakfast or, yeah. right. you know, some situation right. like that. So I would have said, why not pack that food up and take it home with the kids who need it because they're not going to have anything else to eat. <laughs> Another thing that I, like, I, I, I cook for... Uh, we were talking about it earlier. I cook for school, so I try to give them, make sure their meals are balanced and things like that, right? So I can't stand when I see lunch plates going out to kids, and I, I see this in our area, lunch plates going out to kids, and they're not well balanced at all, right? Mm -hmm. So again, yeah, they're getting this food here, but when they get home, what are they going to eat? Mm -hmm. So I would have if I was in that school district, I would have said, let's just pack it away because, and they reach out, they email those parents. The parents were like, let me have that box so I can feed my kids, you mm -hmm. know, so. Yeah. Alvy, did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, uh, great, now I forgot my thought. <laughs> <laughs> You're young to be doing this. No, I'm not, honey. <laughs> you are. I have a question. You said with, the, with the kids program, um, how is it set up now? I believe, do they pay to come and take your, to, no, no pay. It's free. Okay. Yeah. So the prop, so when you said bringing, um, bringing more. Low guess, income kids. Yeah, low income children there. So it is the transportation issue that you see is the. Um, I don't, for me, I don't think that it's transportation. I'm not going to say it's transportation, but by speaking with uh, Ms. Margaret at the Kids Coalition, she's telling me that it's transportation. Okay. Um, they don't have a way, or maybe they're they just don't have a time. Mm -hmm. There's they don't have a way. You know, something mm -hmm. in that household's going on, so they don't have. So when I put out my cooking club, I put it out on social media. The people who are seeing my social media are my friends, of course, my contacts, my clients. You know, so of course they're like well we know Chrissy let's take her kids to them and trust her you know oh, but yeah. at the same time I'm not hitting where I want to hit right so okay. yes I love the kids they can come and it's free to everyone but I'm not seeing those more disadvantaged kids that I would love to see but I do see that at the kids cooking coalition mm -hmm. because I'm watching them and they're like what is this like what is this mm -hmm. it's an avocado mm -hmm. they don't know that yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I mean oh yeah what is this tomato? I, I watched a kid eat um, a taco on Thursday with just lettuce and cheese. He didn't put the black beans in there. He's like, what is that? I'm not eating it. Because he didn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but at the same time, he's more disadvantaged than my kids. Uh-huh. Yeah, they eat, um, yeah, from the corner store, the bag of chips. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, they, like, 
I want to say it was I was there maybe like last month and I forget what they made they it, it was a meal whatever they made but one of the kids said yeah this is going to be my dinner I didn't feel like that should have been their dinner so that's them telling me this is what they're going to eat uh-huh. you know uh-huh. and if they didn't they probably would have been stopping at McDonald's or Burger uh-huh. King you know what I mean which we all need to get away from but it's just sad when you see it's an eye-opener really yeah so you said that you would expand, but you need more volunteers. What mm-hmm. do volunteers do? Um, if I would expand, they would be there when I couldn't be there. <laughs> Literally, if I'm having guests come in, taking over the class for me, they would just do what I do. Because mm-hmm. literally, when I have guests come in, I'm a volunteer now. Now I don't have to. Uh, lead the class. I, if you if I did doing something they shouldn't be doing, I'll go sit with them at their table and make sure they stay on track. That's what I do when I guess comes in. That's it. Okay, so it's a volunteer to lead the class. So um, not even, I wouldn't even say that because when someone comes and takes over the class or teaching the class and then I have the parent phone. Okay, so, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so, and I'm asking like, are you sure you're okay with doing this? And they're like, oh yeah, we got this. How, how much time do I have? You have two hours. And they're like, mm-hmm. okay, we got you. And they'll take over the class for two hours. And then I'm just there, right. you know? Yeah. And then I, again, I still have the parent phone. Yeah. So, and the kids are good. Mm-hmm. They're not bad. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, a bunch of troubled kids and, mm-hmm. oh, they're all rowdy and they're kids, <clears throat> but they still pay attention. They still learn. They still have a good time. So just mm-hmm. someone just to kind of just be there. What about your volunteers for the block party? So do you, the, do you have plenty of those? or how, how? So this is what I have now. I'm like way more efficient before, like doing all of this. I was just like, yeah, just email them. This is me being in control. This is me doing everything. This is me not reaching out to my team, right? So I'm having you just email me, let me know that you want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a nice professional site now. So now you can just go to volunteer, drop down. I'm not Mm -hmm. connected to anyone. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to say while it's loading back up, it should be a drop down and it's going to have the link back kids club. It's going to have the black party and it's going to have something okay. else. And then you just type, this is what I want to volunteer for. And okay. then um, type in your name, your information, and then I'll get back to you because now we also have a screening process, background check. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm using my resources. Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> so um, there was something I was going to say when you asked that. Yeah, see, he's put up a volunteer application. So you click the volunteer application and you fill out the form, that easy. I love this. I haven't really looked at the site because it literally, we literally just got it done yesterday. <laughs> so um, there was something I saw that was on top of that. Does it also have a big like donate thing that you click on? There is a donate button okay. in the upper right hand corner. Mm-hmm. I'm curious with the fridge project, I know that Second Harvest helps food pantries get you know, refrigerators, even laptops and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So who, would you be paying for like these fridge, refrigerators or would the individual the restaurant. restaurants be doing it? So my goal is to get the refrigerator sponsored hey, by someone yeah. else. For an example, um, I don't know, Geico. Geico Reynolds sponsored. American. Exactly. I'm going to sponsor this refrigerator and we're going to put it here and right. maybe put their signage on the refrigerator. Right. But either way, it's going to be like the give back fridge. So that's my goal. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I work with a business coach, so he helps me kind of put these. Oh, good. Out yeah. To, you're pretty Whoa. savvy and you're also pretty young to be this. <laughs> wow. Wow. You are amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I told you. <laughs> it is. I thought it would be amazing for you, baby. Dama, I think, I think Dama has her hand up again. Uh, I'm Chrissy, I, I don't know about this, but let me throw it out and see what y'all think. I keep thinking about those kids that need to be there mm-hmm. that don't have transportation. Is there some way that we can safely, legally, whatever, be volunteers to go get those kids, bring them in? It wouldn't be, you know, it's not like I have a big bus or anything, but 
but you know, pick up some that if it's okay with the parents, bring them, be there as another assistant for whoever is leaving the lesson, and then take them home. Can we, do you think we can work towards that? to start bringing in these kids that need to be there? So actually, like two days ago, <laughs> I was speaking with one of my peers and I was telling her basically my thoughts on it. And I also am in the process of purchasing a catering van because as of right now, I'm using my car and making too many trips. Mm -hmm. But if I could just put everything in the van, mm -hmm. then I, it's one trip and then you know it's an unload but we were talking about because we're both purchasing vans and then I was telling her about this issue and she said oh well you can just get a 15 passenger van and I and they can come pick up the kids and then bring them to the kitchen that's what I was going to tell you guys I have it that's another one of my partners I actually have the kids cooking club at New Story Church on Wall Town Street, uh -huh. yeah, it's right next door uh -huh. to the food line. They have like that really yep. big kitchen, and yep. they have that classroom right there, so they're allowed <laughs> that. So, because I have like all these people just like basically giving me these avenues, I have money that I can just put towards something. I can put it towards a van uh -huh. and give someone else the opportunity to go around yeah. and pick these kids yeah. up. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That's you're on the right track. That's where we're going how long is it going to take <laughs> mary, yeah. mary lynn has a, her hand up too mary lynn uh yes i i have been involved with the kids cooking coalition kind of from its beginning um and the model was based on around this transportation issue because margaret's vision was this consistent um curriculum that that she developed and it's a six-week curriculum so it's important to have the consistency and each session starts with the nutrition piece and so then if it's grains and uh, then the the menu will that they create will center on grains and you know etc so it builds and because of resource resources are so tight um the decision was made to do these in after school programs that are tied with Title I schools. So it is, you know, I just wanted to put in a few more details about that because it is reaching lower income kids, but the transportation issue is kind of avoided. Um, and the, if you have the van, say, and you're gonna go around, there's gonna have to be a lot of commitment that those children are present and available. And that's hard to do when you're living in the chaos of low income you know, situations. So that kind of commitment puts everything on the parent and you can't, and it doesn't always work because of all of their other demands. So working within this after school model saved a lot of those issues and the parents do pick up at the end of the day and they are involved. They have to commit, you know, to being able, you know, to participate in several other ways. But I just wanted to put that out there because I'm not discouraging the van. I just, saying that you don't have the same kind of control, I guess, built-in control. The other thing about Kids Cooking Coalition is Wake Forest students who volunteer at the campus kitchen are do um, a couple lessons themselves, and then they are the volunteers teaching the cooking skills. So the Wake Forest students are learning cooking skills, and then they're working with the kids with some older supervision there, but it takes a lot. You probably can comment on this too. A Wake Forest student will work with like three kids or four, and that four is really pushing it because the kid's attention span and you're working with knives or heat. <laughs> so yeah. it's very labor intensive. And I, I don't know how you manage that, um, but you know, I think her model has been successful it's been going on four or five years now so but it is just six weeks in the spring semester the way it's built and so something year round would would be great you know but I just wanted to put those details out there yeah and thank you for putting those details out there because that's exactly what it is and that's exactly what I've watched and what and it's fun spending time with the Wake Forest students too because they're like it was 
there was a question about green onions and the instruction were wrong basically and they were like we're supposed to cut the white I said no just cut the greens but they do practice and they, they are um, working with the kids so well but by a lot of what you said are the issues that I'm running into especially with the commitment thing because I had to send out a commitment email right last month to the parents like this is free you guys said that you were going to come and bring the kids so I need you to bring the kids because because it's free you're taking away from someone who could mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. right so that's yeah. it. so what you just said is spot on it's basically you know uh, what I'm dealing with. And that's why I was, we're kind of working to come up with some ideas so that we can kind of partner together and do something else. Like me and uh, Margaret trying to do something so I can reach the kids that I want to reach. And then, um, and as far as the van, possibly, I, that would be a way to get around it for those who couldn't. Yeah. And how back yeah. 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 And there are... Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Julie, quick, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, as far as uh, free, um, offering it free, I was involved in a program that was free like that. And they said that if the person missed three in a row, then they were dropped off and someone on the waiting list was able to be brought in. Um, alternatively, and there was a constant waiting list, and the limit was like 20 people per per program event. Um, I don't know if you've gotten into that kind of detail, but um, that's how they manage that um, commitment issue with the, uh, in that particular program. Yes, and I actually run it the same way. But at the same time, when you see a kid that you know wants to be there yeah. is like, all right, I'm gonna send you this warning letter out. This um and I'm gonna put this back on parents because parents you said you yeah. did this, you know? So yes, that is one way I'm managing that model. We're about to wrap up, yeah. but I just have one more question. Um I I didn't show you the kitchen, but and you're such a visionary. Mm -hmm. In sometime in the future, if we wanted to use that kitchen for the community mm -hmm. or do something. Do you have any insights or ideas? It is so simple. It's not as, um, it's, um, it's not as difficult as you think it would be only because uh, that kitchen I'm pretty sure isn't a, uh, inspected by the health department, but because you're not giving, you're not uh, selling food, you're giving it away, you're fine. You can do a community kitchen like that. And I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure if it has a stove and it has a refrigerator, you're in a pot and a pan. <laughs> but it used to have to be to standard for a child care center. We used mm -hmm. to have a child care center here. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty, yeah. 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 Sure yeah. That, that kitchen is fine and you can serve your community the way you want to. Mm -hmm. I promise. <laughs> but that's exactly what they use at the kitchen for at this store. Okay. And they have a huge pantry. They're like, oh yeah, you use what you need, but I normally just kind of bring in my own food. Mm -hmm. But um, they have a huge pantry. They have like too many refrigerators and freezers and that's what they feed the community on Mondays. No need anyone coming in and inspecting anything because mm -hmm. you're not selling anything. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to do, do right with mm -hmm. people. You're mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But of course I still. <laughs> not you well your, your plate is full no it is not, it's not. <laughs> I have more space on my plate mm, you need a bread plate and a salad bowl <laughs> <laughs> all right. well, any other questions for, for Chrissy this has been mm, amazing wonderful. Yes. Yes. um Allie do you want to uh, Allie, Alvy, do you want to wrap things up or is she still on yeah, I'm still here. Uh, thank you to um, Chrissy and to everyone for attending. I put a little message in the chat, um, so I'm not sure if everyone saw it, but Chrissy, if you need uh, assistance from an event coordinator, because that's who I am, uh, let me know. <laughs> I would definitely love to work with you um, on the side to um, host a, um, a lupus uh uh, gala sometime later on this this year, but we can talk about that later. But 
I wanted to just quickly the the, the a lot of times with with kids when they say ew I I don't want that that doesn't taste good it does come from one they haven't tried it and two they haven't tried it it's not something they're familiar with because for far too many children living in food um deserts of food insecurities their first vegetable is either a potato chip or a french fry yeah. which we all yeah. know is not a vegetable so mm-hmm. or it's or it's green beans or collard greens or something that you know was once a vegetable but tastes nothing like it once you know grandma gets in there and cooks it i mean god love my mom she is a soulful woman and i'm <laughs> trying to teach her how to you know cook vegetables that you know aren't drowned in sauces and seasonings <laughs> good luck with that. (laughs) But uh, that that's where a lot of that stems from. And it's so sad. And I I want in I almost I have to applaud during the um, height of the pandemic that Forsyth County Schools came out with their mobile units to deliver uh, foods to to families, you know, that, you know, kids aren't out of school, they know they need to eat. And they delivered enough food for all the kids in the house, regardless if you went to Forsyth County Schools or not. Um, so you guys could have meals throughout the week, throughout the weekend, and even on the holidays. And I think they're still doing that uh, now that you can either pick that up or um, get it delivered if you need it. So I have to applaud them for that. But then on that flip side, you have to think, well, what is the food that they're getting? How much of that is just being tossed out because nobody in the house is eating it? But I'm gonna digress. Yeah, I'm gonna digress that for right now because that's we could have a whole nother conversation about that. But um, once again, Chrissy, thank you for uh, attending today. Um, we we are just awed and inspired by everything that you're doing. Uh, give that cute little fur bunny of yours a hug for me, and if we if we um, don't have any other questions or concerns, do we? I'm gonna ask. Um, Chrissy to, to tell how we can order her food ourselves at Bowie's Market. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I do need to give you guys, like, website information and things like that. So, for the foundation, um, the website is leanbackgiveback.org, and then the catering company is leanbacksoulfood.com. If you didn't, if that's if you didn't get it, if you type in my name or if you type in Lean Back, it comes or everything comes right up about me or okay. the company. It's just like where everything comes up. Um, if you want to shop at Bowie's, you would just go to the website, leanbacksofu.com, and it says shop. Um, you'll see it now, but I'm telling you, do not order because I actually need to cut it off because I'm already booked up enough. But um, it, I go to Bowie's every other Tuesday. So I'm cooking now or this in the next two days for people to come and get their food on Tuesday, this coming up. I won't be back again until two Tuesdays from there. Um, but that's basically what you do. You just go to the website, see what I'm offering. And if you wanna order, you order and then you come pick it up. It's heat and serve, you just warm it up. I can, we can do anything like fried chicken, but you're just gonna put it in the oven. It's gonna crisp back up just the way it should, right? So <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I can, I will highly recommend, we were talking about her soul rolls and yeah. her shrimp and grits and her Alfredo. Oh my gosh. The soul rolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and banana pudding. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She yeah. has a remarkable talent with putting flavors together. Nice. That is just truly amazing. Well, thank you guys for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm just going to put a plug in too before we all hop off that today following the 11 o'clock service, we will have a, um, a listening session for the widening the welcome initiative so please join us either in person or online for our 1230 widening the welcome listening ser- uh, session. All right. Thank you. And if all of that's all the news that's fit to print may the Lord watch between me and thee, and we will. Uh, gather together um, d- during the 11 a service. Chrissy, again, thank you. You are just fantastic. May God continue to bless you in every little thing you do. And thank you for joining us today. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>